out of all the videos on YouTube, this one may be the only one where everyone in the comments section can agree upon a single thing. Warps suck. Like all knife makers, I also hate when my blade warps during a quench. So to mitigate this in the future, we're going to be using a very cheap woodworker's vise in combination with some scrap steel to create a nice rigid set of quench plates. I was motivated to take on this project after watching some videos from Alex at Outdoor 55 and from Jeremy at Simple Little Life. They both have quench plates and it seems like it works fairly well for them. I'm building this quench plate base so that it is fairly modular with my shop, meaning that I can store it away when I'm not using it, and I can clamp it to multiple different surfaces or affix it to a surface permanently. If I ever get a larger shop, I would probably like to do so. I have two pillars and then this cross member here that I will actually attach to vise to. To locate where I will be drilling my holes, I put some marking fluid on the cross member and use a drill bit in the holes to pass through onto the marking fluid where the center of those holes are. And then I'll be drilling a quarter inch hole in both of these locations. Once these holes are drilled onto the cross member, we will attach the cross member onto the vise with quarter 20 fasteners. This is done to ensure that we didn't make any mistakes during our drilling process and we have a good fit. The next step is to weld this cross member onto the square tubing pillars that we cut out earlier. To accomplish this task, we will be using my Hobart handler. This is a welding machine that can weld in MIG or flux core. In this situation, I'll be utilizing the flux core setup since I have run out of gas in my tank. Step one is to get the pillar and cross member at a 90 degree angle to each other and tack weld them together. I'll do this for both sides, and then we'll move outside to do the bulk of the welding. I don't have the luxury of having a nice indoor welding table, so we're going to be using a vise in the backyard. Once we have the metal stuck together, I use my angle grinder to clean up the welds and then hit it with a coat of paint. The next day, after the paint has dried, we are going to tackle the challenge of attaching the plates onto the vise. In our case, we're gonna be using two large pieces of quarter inch two by two angle iron as our quench plates. Now I am calling these quench plates. However, they're more like straightening plates. Quench plates are generally made out of aluminum and utilized when heat treating stainless steel. However, in our case, we're using steel plates, straightening plates, in order to make sure that we have straight blades after quenching our high carbon blades in oil. So from now on, I will call these straightening plates. Step one is to get these into the appropriate dimensions, which are gonna be around 12 inches long. I then drilled a few extra holes in the vise so that I can mount these plates appropriately. I felt that the holes that came in the vise were a little too close together and I wanted to widen them out a little bit to make the entire system a little stronger. I then place the straightening plates into the vise with a little marking fluid on them so I can figure out where to drill my holes into the plates. I'm going to be drilling a number seven hole and then tapping them with quarter 20 threads. Here's a pro tip for you guys. When you are trying to tap a straight hole and you don't have a tap follower, you can use your drill press or your mill to manually start the tap in your drilled hole. So what you would do is drill your number seven hole, put your tap into your chuck, and then put some tension down onto your workpiece and start the tap by hand. Once you get it started, you can loosen the chuck and then finish out with the appropriate tools. Once we have both of the holes drilled and tapped on our top straightening plate, I will test fit them onto the vise. To do this, I'm utilizing the quarter 20 fasteners, but I'm also putting some nuts on those fasteners 
to act as washers or spacers since my bolts are too long. And as you can see here, I don't have any protrusion with those bolts by utilizing those spacers. After we have the top jaw attached to the vise, I put the bottom jaw into the vise and clamp down so that it is nice and straight with the top jaw. Then using the same method that we used before, we marked out where our holes are gonna be and then drilled two number seven holes and tapped them to quarter 20. Once the vise was together, I realized that the handle cannot move very well without hitting the top jaw. So we're gonna modify this section of our vise so that we can spin this handle around freely. To do that, I'll drill two holes and then connect those holes with cuts in my bandsaw. I drill the holes so that I have a nice radius edge on the inside of this slot. Once we have the cuts made with the bandsaw, we will clean up those cuts with the 2x72 belt sander. There are two last modifications that we will be making. First of all, we will be welding the handle so that it stays rigid in the center of the hub. And secondly, we will be welding a nut onto the hub so that we can try to use this with an impact driver. During the quench, things can happen quickly, and I figured welding a nut here could give me the option of closing these jaws very quickly if need be. Just make sure to be very careful with your fingers when attempting to weld the bolt on to the hub here. Spoiler alert, this actually worked out very well in the final product. Once we have the nut welded on, I go ahead and reassemble this vise to see how everything fits up. I really like the action of the vise and how rigid everything fits together. I like how I have clearance on the handle and I like how fast I can open and close it with the impact driver. This will pay dividends during a quench where time is of the essence. It's actually really fun to open and close this vise and I sat here for way longer than what I'm showing you here on the film. So at this point, we're about 90% done, 95% done. I did, however, notice that there is a gap where it is not square between the two plates. This is due to probably the cheap construction of the woodworking vise. I just so happen to have a piece of bandsaw blade from my last blade that I broke, so I'll be using this piece of bandsaw blade as a spacer. And lo and behold, it was actually the perfect width to make these blades meet up in a square assembly. You can see the teeth of the bandsaw blade spacer when looking at the vise from above. Now that we have our vise finished, we are gonna be doing some heat treating. So I have heat treated about five blades in this vise thus far, and every one of them have come out straight. So, so far, so good. My process is to quench the blade in Parks 50 for about five to six seconds and then quickly put the blade in the vise and use the impact driver to tighten the vise down on top of the blade. I'll then let the blade cool in the vise for around another five to six minutes. And at that point, you have not only a hard blade, but a straight blade. I hope you guys really enjoyed this build. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.